10.4a voltaic or galvanic cells. For this lesson in the table J, let's move on. Let's first discuss a new term known as electrochemical cells. Redox reactions, as we've been learning in this unit, can actually be used in a practical way. Specifically, they can be used for something called electrochemical cells. What are electrochemical cells? Well, electrochemical cells are cells where uh, you have a chemical reaction and that's somehow related to a flow of electrons. So depending on what type of electrochemical cell you have, you can either have a chemical reaction leading to a flow of electrons or a flow of electrons leading to a chemical reaction, depending on what type of electrochemical cell you have. All right. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on the first type, which is voltaic cells or galvanic cells. Voltaic or galvanic cells are cells where you have a spontaneous chemical reaction happening by itself, and that spontaneous chemical reaction uh, makes a flow of electrons and therefore produces electricity. All right. The second type of electrochemical cell, which we'll be learning about in a future lesson, are electrolytic cells, which are cells in which electricity is used to cause a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to happen. So voltaic goes from chemical uh, energy to electrical energy, whereas electrolytic is in reverse. You go from electro electrical to chemical. Okay. But well, we'll be learning more through, more about that throughout this lesson. But remember that. Just know that for now, uh, voltaic means a spontaneous chemical reaction causes um, the production of electrons or uh, electricity, okay? Now, before getting into voltaic cells, let's talk more about uh, all electrochemical cells. So these facts apply to both voltaic and electrolytic cells, okay? So the components of all electrochemical cells are as follows. In all electrochemical cells, you usually have two of what are called half cells. Half cells look like this, they're separate containers or beakers where oxidation and reduction half reactions occur. So they're separate containers where oxidation half reactions occur in one beaker and reduction half reactions occur in another beaker. And in each half cell, you have what's called an electrode. These are represented by these uh, rectangular shapes down here. Electrodes specifically are metal surfaces that conduct electricity. That's because we know metal surfaces can conduct electricity, right, already. Specifically, you have two different types of electrodes where oxidation and reduction occur. Uh, somewhere called the anode is where oxidation occurs, and reduction occurs at another electrode called a cathode. So just remember that at the anode, oxidation occurs and reduction occurs at the cathode. The way you can remember where oxidation and reduction occur is the electrode zoo. Think about being at a zoo, you can remember where oxidation and reduction occur by the saying an ox and a red cat. So an ox tells you that anodes are where oxidation occurs. And um, reduction occurs at the cathode. So just remember an ox, red cat. Anodes are where oxidation occurs and reduction occurs at the cathode. All right, so those are where, those are the electrodes where oxidation and reduction occur. So one more time, just remember um, an ox and a red cat. Anodes are where oxidation occurs and reduction occurs at the cathode. What I also want you to know about all electrochemical cells is how electrons flow. Specifically, in electrochemical cells, electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. So let's break this down in terms of um, redox reactions and electro electrons, okay? If we break this down, just like I said, electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. So let's understand that in terms of redox. In terms of redox, based on an ox and a red cat, um, you know that electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. Therefore, based on anox and a red cat, that would mean that you flow from wherever uh, you have something oxidized to wherever you have something reduced. Okay? So whatever's oxidized is where the electrons start, and whatever's reduced is where the electrons wind up, because electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. And if you translate that in terms of redox using anox and a red cat, it flows from whichever species is oxidized to whichever species is reduced. And if we break this down in terms of electrons, let's see why this makes sense. The reason why this makes sense in terms of electrons is if we use the idea of oil rig, we break it down and we know that um, whatever's oxidized will lose electrons based on oil rig, and whatever's reduced will gain electrons based on oil rig. So therefore, anodes where the species is oxidized will be what loses electrons. And um, cathode, where the species is reduced, will gain electrons, okay? So why that makes sense is because anodes where you lose electrons are, are where electrons start, and cathodes, where you gain electrons, obviously should be where electrons wind up at the end, okay? All right, so, ele so electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. Just like I said, based on anox and a red cat, that means that electrons flow from where, um, from where the species is oxidized to whichever species is reduced. That's because of anox and red cat. 
All right, so let's try an example of electron flow. Again, remember, electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode, okay? So let's try an example here. Um, in this example, what we see is that Cu becomes Cu2+. Plus. Since it's going up in oxidation state, we know that this is oxidized, right? Based on oil rig and um, anox and a red cat, that means that since it's oxidized based on anox, that tells us that Cu is the site of the anode. And based on oil rig, that tells us that Cu, since it's oxidized, must lose electrons. All right? Ag plus, on the other hand, is uh, going down to an oxidation state of zero. Since it's going down from an oxidation state of plus one to zero, it's being reduced since it's going down, right? Based on um, anox and a red cat, because this is reduced, that's going to be where the cathode is. Ag is going to be where the cathode is based on anox and a red cat, all right? Based on oil rig, what that tells us also is that uh, since this is reduced based on oil rig, this is where electrons will be gained. So since this is the anode, Cu, and this is the cathode, Ag+, what happens here is electrons will flow from Cu, where you um, lose electrons at the anode, to Ag+, where you gain electrons at the cathode. All right, so from Cu, the anode, where uh, oxidation occurs, to Ag+, where reduction occurs, which is the cathode. So electrons, remember, flow from the anode to the cathode. How you determine which one is the anode and the cathode is based on anox and a red cat. Whichever is oxidized is the anode, and whichever is reduced is the cathode. Okay? So now let's go over our main focus of this lesson, which is voltaic cells. Now, voltaic cells I'll define in the following ways. So make sure you understand and memorize the facts in this slide. First of all, the type of reaction involved in voltaic cells is spontaneous. What I mean by spontaneous is the reaction happens on its own. Specifically, what happens during a spontaneous reaction in a voltaic cell is a chemical reaction will lead to the production of electricity. So basically, chemical energy will change into electrical energy. Now, uh, in terms of energy conversion, what happens is chemical energy, like I just said, becomes electrical energy. So make sure you memorize that for voltaic cells. Chemical energy as a reaction produces electrical energy, therefore making the reaction spontaneous. Like I just said in the last slide, electrons always flow from the anode where oxidation occurs to the cathode where reduction occurs based on anox and a red cat. What you'll also have in voltaic cells is a solution with ions. And the reason why solutions with ions are important in voltaic cells is the ions that are released when you dissolve stuff in solution are mobile. And since the ions are mobile, that allows them to conduct electricity. So the solutions that have these mobile ions in uh, voltaic cells are called electrolytes. Okay? I also want you to know the five main components of all voltaic cells, and they're summarized very nicely in this diagram down here. The five main components are as follows. So I want you to know the names of the five main components and their functions. So first off, we have a wire connecting the um, anode and the cathode. The wire, because it's like metallic, will allow electrons to flow between the electrodes. So like I said before, electrons will flow between the anode and the cathode. And how you achieve that is electrons will flow along this metallic wire from the anode to the cathode like this, OK? Secondly, we also have between the two um, solutions of electrolytes something called a salt bridge. And the salt bridge is important because, as the name implies, you have a salt and they're bridged together. So the salt bridge has the function of connecting the two solutions. And as a result, its main function is it allows for the flow of ions between the electrolyte solutions. Because these electrolyte electrolytic solutions have free mobile ions, the salt bridge allows them to flow through here back and forth. All right, that's the function of the salt bridge. It allows for the free flow of ions. What you also have in the middle and between the um, anode and the cathode is what's known as a voltmeter. As the name suggests, voltmeter is used to measure the voltage of an electric current between the metals. Okay? Finally, uh, we have the anode and the cathode. Like we learned before in the last slide, anox and a red cat. The anode is um, where oxidation occurs based on anox and a red cat. And based on oil rig, we also know the anode, since it's oxidation, is where you lose electrons. Since you lose electrons at the anode where oxidation occurs, you also lose mass because you're losing particles. So make sure you remember that. Okay? The cathode based on red cat is obviously where reduction occurs based on red cat. And based on oil rig, that also tells us that the cathode where reduction occurs is where you gain electrons. Since you gain electrons at the cathode, you're gaining particles. And as a result, you're gaining mass because it's becoming more heavy as you gain more particles. OK? So um, Cu, since it's being oxidized to become Cu2+, plus, based on anox, is obviously the anode. And because it's oxidized based on oil rig, it's losing electrons. So that's where the electrons start here, at the anode, which is the Cu electrode. 
AG plus, on the other hand, like I said in the last slide, is being reduced, so it's the cathode based on red cat. Since it's the cathode where reduction is occurring, based on oil rig, you also know that um, since AG plus is the cathode where reduction occurs, it's gaining electrons. So that's where the electrons wind up at the end. All right, so it flows from Cu electrode, where it's the anode of oxidation, to the cathode AG, where you have the cathode where reduction is occurring. This loses electrons, and it goes to where it gains electrons, which is the, which is the cathode where the reduction is occurring. All right, so make sure you remember that. Um, finally, I want you to be able to determine, even without you know looking at a reaction, which is the anode and which is the cathode, meaning which one will be oxidized more likely in a voltaic cell and which one will be more easily reduced. The easiest way to do this is using table J. Like we learned in class today, let's remember that... Um, the more active metal will be more easily oxidized, all right? And the less active metal will be more easily reduced. Furthermore, let's remember based on anox and a red cat that anode is where oxidation occurs and reduction occurs at the cathode. So whichever is the more active metal, that's more easily oxidized. And because that's more easily oxidized based on anox, that's also where the anode will be. So just remember, the more active metal is more easily oxidized and based on anox, that's where the anode is. On the other hand, the less active metal will be more easily reduced because it's already so far down, right? And based on red cat, that also tells us that um, the, speed, the metal that's more easily reduced will be the cathode based on red cat. All right, so also remember that the less active metal on table J is more easily reduced, and because of red cat, it's also where the cathode is. So basically, in a nutshell, so the more active metal, since it's more easily oxidized, will be the anode based on anox. And the less active metal, since it's more easily reduced, will be the cathode based on red cat. So just remember, the less active metal is always, um, since it's more easily reduced, will be the cathode based on red cat, and the more active metal, since it's more easily oxidized, will be the anode based on anox. So remember, less active metal is reduced, so it's the cathode based on red cat, and more active metal is um, oxidized, so it'll be the anode based on anox, okay? Less active metal reduction, so it's cathode based on red cat. More active metal is more easily oxidized, so it's the anode based on anox. All right. So let's try some examples here really quickly. It says, on the, based on the diagram above, even without looking at that, this reaction, we have to identify the anode and cathode and get the direction of electron flow. So if we look on table J, what we'll find is that um, if we, we have two electrodes. We have copper and AG. Let's remember, the more active metal is more easily oxidized, so it's the anode based on anox. And the less active metal is more easily reduced, so it's the cathode based on red cat. So between these two, the more active metal... Uh, will be uh, Cu, because it's higher up or more active on table J. Since it's higher up or more active, it is more easily oxidized. And based on anox, therefore, this would be the side of the anode. On the other hand, Ag is less active than Cu, so it would be uh, more easily reduced because it's already so far down. And based on red cat, therefore, it would be the side of the cathode. So in summary, if we break this down to an answer, copper is more active or higher on table J, so it will be oxidized, and it is the anode. So the Cu metal part is the anode part. So silver, since it's uh, the less active one, will obviously be reduced because it's so far down, and therefore it's the cathode. So silver ions will be reduced at the cathode since they're less active than copper is. Specifically, the strip of uh, silver solid that contains silver ions is the cathode. So the Ag metal part is the cathode. All right. Since this is oxidized based on an uh, oil rig, it will lose electrons. So copper loses electrons. And Ag, since it's reduction, since it's lower down, will gain electrons based on oil rig. All right, so copper is oxidized, so it loses electrons. Silver ions are reduced since they're less active, so they gain electrons. So uh, since, this, since this is where you lose electrons, this is where electrons start off. And since, since this is where you gain electrons, this is where the electrons end up at the end. All right? But more simply put, electrons will flow from Cu, which is the anode, to Ag metal, which is the cathode, since electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode, always, 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 no matter what. All right, so there you go. Electrons will flow like this in this direction. There you go. Since copper is the anode, that's where electrons start, and since silver is the cathode, that's where electrons wind up. So um, electrons flow from the anode Cu to the cathode Ag, since electrons always flow from the anode to cathode, no matter what. All right, so now let's go. Let's summarize voltaic cells. I'm not going to go over this with you. You can actually read this on your own because this is all just information from the previous slide. Just look through this on your own, please. All right, but let's go through a second example. In this example, we have zinc, 
and we have copper. It says identify the cathode and anode, the direction of electron flow, and the change in mass of each electrode after the redox reaction. If you compare zinc, which is Zn, to Cu, the one that's more active, obviously, will be more easily oxidized because it's high up there, and the one that's um, more, less active will be more easily reduced because it's so low down there. If you compare these, so if you compare Zn and Cu, you'll see that Zn is obviously higher up or more active than Cu is. All right? Since Zn is higher up or more active than Cu is, it will obviously be more easily oxidized, and therefore it will be the anode based on anox, right? So the anode will be the Zn electrode. Now Cu, which is uh, less active, will obviously be more easily reduced because it's all the way down there already. And based on red cat, therefore, Cu will be the cathode because it's more easily reduced and less active. So therefore, the cathode is the Cu electrode. Now in terms of electron flow, now that we've identified the uh, cathode and the anode, we can now um, predict the direction of electron flow. Let's remember electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode always. All right, the anode is obviously the Zn electrode and the cathode is the Cu electrode. So what you're going to do is you're going to flow from the anode, which is the Zn electrode, to the Cu electrode. Again, this is because um, the Zn electrode is is the anode, so that's where electrons start, and the Cu electrode is the cathode, so that's where electrons wind up. So you go from the anode to the cathode always in terms of electron flow. Specifically, you go from the Zn electrode, which is the anode, to the Cu electrode, which is the cathode. Okay? Now, in terms of um, the change in mass, since Zn is oxidized, it loses electrons based on oil rig. And since Zn loses electrons as a result of being oxidized based on oil rig, it will lose mass because losing electrons means the same thing as losing particles. All right, Cu, on the other hand, is reduced, and based on oil rig, therefore, it will gain electrons. Since it gains electron, since Cu gains electrons as a result of being reduced, it will gain mass because gaining particles makes something heavier. All right, finally, let's define the importance of electrolyte solutions. Electrolyte solutions, as we know, produce free mobile ions needed for the cell, allowing for electricity be, to be conducted in the solutions, making them electrolytes. And the salt bridge between um, this the solution of Zn and Cu will allow for the free flow of ions back and forth like I said before. Okay? So these sample problems, you can go over most of these on your own. I will go through them really, really fast right now. Let's remember, oxidation always occurs at the anode based on anox, and reduction always occurs at the cathode based on red cat. And this applies to both uh, electrolytic and voltaic cells. That's because anox and red cat applies to all electrochemical cells, which include voltaic and electrolytic cells. All right? Um, and number two, let's remember electrons always flow from the anode, which is where oxidation occurs since you lose electrons there, to the cathode, which is where reduction occurs since you gain electrons there. So remember, electrons always flow from the anode where you lose electrons to the cathode where you gain electrons. And this applies to all electrochemical cells. In voltaic cells, let's remember a chemical reaction causes electricity to be produced spontaneously. So therefore, in all voltaic cells, chemical energy from a reaction converts to electrical energy spontaneously on its own. And number four, the five main components of a voltaic cell are the anode where oxidation occurs, cathode where reduction occurs, voltmeter which measures um, voltage across the cell, a salt bridge which allows for the free flow of ions, and wires which allow for electrical current to pass through. Like I just said, for number five, a salt bridge allows for the flow of ions between the electrolyte solutions. In number six, we can identify the anode and the cathode based on anox in a red cat. Since Mg is being oxidized, it's the side of the anode, right? Based on anox. So therefore, Mg is the, the Mg electrode is the anode. And um, based on red cat, since Al3 plus is being reduced to Al0, it's a side of reduction. And based on red cat, therefore, the Al electrode would be the cathode since that's where reduction is occurring, all right? And B, electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. Since Mg electrode is the anode and Al electrode is the cathode, uh, electrons will flow from the Mg electrode, which is the anode, to the Al electrode, which is the cathode. This is because electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode, all right? Uh, for the half reactions at the cathode, you have to do reduction based on red cat, and at anode, you have to do oxidation based on anox. So the oxidation half reaction is from Mg to Mg2+, plus, and obviously to add two electrons to the higher side, which is the 2 plus side. For the cathode, you have to do the reduction half reaction, which is from Al3 plus to Al0, and you have to add electrons to the higher Al3 plus side, so you get Al3 plus plus 3 minus produces Al. All right, the subatomic particles that flow through a wire obviously are electrons because they're the negative charges that allow electricity to be conducted. Um, if you close the switch, you need to figure out which one is the anode and which was is the cathode. Let's remember the less active metal 
is um, more easily reduced, so that's where the cathode is. Between these two, the less active metal, which is more easily reduced, would be sodium because it's lower down. Since it's lower down, it's less active and more easily reduced. And based on red cat, therefore, sodium would be the cathode because it's more easily reduced. All right? On the other hand, Ba is the more active metal because it's higher up, so it would be more easily oxidized. And based on anox, therefore, it would be the anode. All right? The half reaction for barium being oxidized would be from Ba0 to Ba2 plus and 2E minus on the other side. That's because oxidation you have to go from high, lower to higher. The lowest state of Ba you can have is an atom, so you put Ba0. The highest state of Ba you can have is a 2 plus charge in the periodic table. So you go from 0 to 2 plus and you add 2 electrons to the higher Ba2 plus side. On the other hand, um, at the cathode you have to have reduction. And Reduction means you go from the highest state to the lowest state. The highest possible state of sodium is plus one since that's the oxidation state in the periodic table. And the lowest state of sodium is obviously a neutral atom, which is Na0, so that's how you write it. And you have to add electrons to the higher plus one side since that's where um, the higher charge is. So you get Na plus one, plus one E minus produces Na0. All right, since barium is the anode and sodium is the cathode, electrons will flow from the anode, which is the barium, to sodium, which is the cathode. That's because electrons always, always, always flow from the anode to the cathode, okay? In D, uh, if we look, let's remember that um, wherever reduction occurs, which is the cathode, you will gain electrons. And wherever um, the anode is, where oxidation occurs, you will lose electrons, right? So since barium loses electrons, as a result of being the anode where oxidation occurs, its mass will decrease. That's because if you lose electrons, you lose particles, and therefore you lose mass. On the other hand, um, Na, since it's uh, the cathode where reduction occurs and you gain electrons, you will gain mass, or the mass will increase. That's because gaining electrons at this cathode where reduction occurs will mean you get more mass as a result of um, more particles being gained there. Okay? Now, uh, you can do this on your own. This is very simple. Uh, yeah, it's a repeat of what I just said. For this part, however, notice here how I have aluminum, uh, an aluminum nail here and iron here, right? It says state the direction of electron flow. Let's remember it always flows from the anode to the cathode. So let's identify which is the anode and which is the cathode. If you look up um, Al versus Fe, you'll find that Al is more active. Since Al is more active, it's more easily oxidized. And based on anox, Therefore, that makes Al the anode. Now, Fe, Fe as a result of being um, less active, will be more easily reduced. And based on red cat, it will therefore be the side of the cathode, right? So let's see how this works. Since aluminum is the more more active, uh, more active element, it's where you'll have oxidation. And since it's oxidation based on anox, it's the anode, right? And since this is more easily reduced as a result of being less active, it will be reduced and therefore it will be the cathode based on red cat. So electrons, as we know, always flow from the anode to the cathode. All right, so therefore, electrons will flow from ale, which is the anode, to iron, which is the cathode. Therefore, the direction of electron flow will be from the aluminum nail, which is the anode, oxidized, to iron rod, which is the cathode, which is reduced. B, you can do on your own. C, you can find this in the reading. If you, if you read the reading, what you'll find is why phosphoric acid is needed from, for a battery to operate is because in the sentence it says hydrogen ions from phosphoric acid in the potatoes react to form hydrogen gas. That's why you need it. Just It comes straight from the reading. Just read it, okay? Finally, please complete these homework questions on your own for tomorrow's class, including checkpoint questions 1 through 3, which are popular throughout this video. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.